Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you here at the Anatomic Institute in Mülheim, Düsseldorf. My name is Dr. Alexander Cerea, I'm orthopedic surgeon from Vienna and I'm happy to show you the implementation and the workflow of the Enduro Knee Revision System together with my team. I hope you're going to have a very informative and good time and uh, I hope that I can show you some tips and tricks for the Enduro knee system. Okay, we start with a traditional midline incision approach. As you can see, nothing new for you, no matter if this is a revision or a primary case. Midline incision and then, thank you, Preparation of the extensor mechanism as usual. Identification of the quadriceps tendon. Here we go. And the tuberosa this tubercle. We clean this off a little bit. Thank you. And after identification we do a medial parapatella approach all right then the next step is to expose the medial part of the proximal tibia here we go we can do a thoroughly release so that you can see it even better and the collateral ligaments don't have to be preserved in this uh, case next thing is that we do also preparation of the patellar pad as you can see thank you of course resection of the collateral ligaments both here we go. Preparation of the anterior cortex to see if we just do the preparation implantation on the primary knee to see where the anterior cortex is for positioning of the femoral part. Here we go. That's nice. And then we do an evitation of the patella. I routinely resurface the patella in every primary case and also try to do so in revision cases only when you have very thin bone stock I do a v-shape of the remaining bone so-called resection arthroplasty of the patella and this helps a little bit for a good patella tracking we go in flexion again. Yes, wonderful. Okay, I go a little further for skin incision so that you have a better visualization of the knee joint. Wonderful. So I'm a tibia first uh, surgeon. So what we are going to do next is the opening of the intermedullary canal. You can take the reamer or the drill as I do. Wonderful. And I do prefer to go for the hybrid technique, which means cement less stems, preferably the long ones, which is on the tibia 172 millimeters. And we will see if we can go down there. That's very good and nicely. Is this okay, Becky, mm -hmm. for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We want to have a glide fit and not a really press fit. And glide fit because the implant is one millimeter bigger in diameter than the reamers are. So what I will just always do is when I have my mark where I have to do the cut, I want this mark completely went into the intermedullary canal like this. So I do have a nice fitting here 
and then I will assemble the tibia resection block, okay, which is this one, as you can see, from all directions. It's very easy to open this screw, put it down, and then you do measure your resection height. What I do normally is I just have, may I have the angel wing? Thank you very much. All right. So in revision cases, you obviously go to this uh, point where you do want to have your resection. And this part, it's a little bit valgus, so it's better to go down there. And then I do the fixation of the block in a proper rotation. And here you see quite a lot of different pinholes to adjust the resection. And as this is a primary, we want to have a resection of 10 millimeters. You can go down there and do the proper resection. We are now at zero as far as I can see, and we can lower it to have a good resection. This is just also an, 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 an external a guide to see if you're in the right direction. If you're not 100% sure, then you can do also an intraoperative x-ray to check if the intramedullary reamer is in uh, well or in good position, which I do rarely in revision cases. Okay, the next thing is that we have to disable a thing, so you open all screws, then you can take this off. You can also take this lower part off, which makes it probably a little bit easier to see. And then we have to remove, of course, the intramedullary rod when we go for the tibia resection. Here we go. Thank you. And as I said, we are now at zero, so we can go down at least six millimeters of resection or probably eight and I will check with the angel wing again to see how much of the resection I will have. Thank you. Yeah, that's not too much. And even on this side it will be... So probably I will just go down for 10 millimeters. It's even a little bit more resection. Here we go. Okay, and now I do the sawing. Please hold it a little like... Ah, oh, yeah, okay, the third pin, okay, the safety thing, so then it's very stable as you can see right now. Then we do the resection. Okay, it's already loose. Thank you. I go for the extractor, for the pin extractor first. Thank you. see what we have done. That's good. And I go for the clamp or a little osteoporotic bone. But that's how the real situation is in a lot of our patients. Okay. And now we see the tibial plateau. The next step that I'm doing is normally that at that stage when I have good visualization of the plateau. I do the size measurement. It, uh, from the anatomic point of view, it will be a size one or a size two. The Enduro comes in three sizes, and the good thing is that you can combine the sizes, one up and one down. So the Tiber size one goes with one or two sides of the femoral part. Nice bone cut. And we try a number two. Yeah, that can fit very nicely. I hope you can see it. We have a relatively good coverage here. And if this will be somehow troublesome, we can change also to a size number one. <laughs> First cut is done. Then I will uh, do the removal of the pins. Thank you. 
you can leave them also in there if you just have the feeling that you need some additional resection but I am sure that we are fine and the next thing is that I go for the reamer again and I show you how I put the reamer into the intermedullary canal so that it can reach a so-called glide fit you have the marks here and this must disappear so this is not sufficient enough it must go down so that the mark is completely disappearing like you can see right now when I go with this instrument you show I can show you that the groove is completely under the surface of the bony cut and this will be a sufficient and good glide fit fixation. So the next step is that I go for the distal femur cut in order to go for a gap balancing, for extension gap balancing. So we just go for the femur. Yeah. You can either use this instrument or go directly with the reamer. I prefer the reamer. It makes it a little easier. And you do an opening with the medullary canal. We can do the size measurement and we have an instrument here which shows you the mediolateral dimension of femur size 1 or femur size 2 and when we go here it is uh, it is I think even more a, a 1 than a 2 this is again the size number uh -huh. in the AP dimension the size 2 will fit better okay so we go probably with two because downsizing is not a problem upsizing is a big problem as you know so here we go we start again with the smallest one okay 11 now it's 12 it's 12 okay I always go clockwise it makes it easier so oh yeah that's not bad yeah you have a good press fit which size is it 13 13 yeah that makes sense and I just do really a stable fixation if you're not sure you always can check with an intraoperative x-ray so the next step is that we do the distal femur cut and you can choose when you are going um, cement less you can have a 5 or a 7 degree of valgus and uh, as this uh, uh, person is a not so big uh, more or less a tall person not a tall person but a small person I go for 7 degrees of valgus in the cemented version you have 6 degrees and you can pre-assemble that and then you can also pre-assemble the, the, the height of the implant and you see that F1, F2 and F3 have different uh, 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 sizes of material which has to be resected in the primary case. So we just go in here, open the check and go into contact, it's a relatively balanced and now we do a fixation of the distal cutting block with contact on this we just put the knee a little out there yeah wonderful thank you and here you can see you have again three different holes with two millimeters I go to the middle one and so that I can do a fine adjustment of two millimeters up or down and here you see the different slots for the wedges this is 0, 4, 8 and 12 millimeters so in case if you have a defect we can create this a little later you can cut four in 4 millimeter steps which will be compensated then by the respective uh, uh, wedges and here you see the height is to F2 if you have a revision case then I just put it uh, away and you're in the direct, directly contact with the bone so I do the disassembly like this and the handle please thank you 
here we go and then I put it on again and then I will check the resection height thank you and this is now the height of the implant itself right which is a little uh, a little bit less resection I go for two millimeters more resection okay yeah I like this a little more so we go for this third pin okay and then push the knee a little towards me ah that's not perfect wonderful okay wonderful so and now we will check for the extension gap why is this important I do want to have a very well balanced extension gap in order not to create a hyper extension of the knee because this leads to some uh, insecurity feeling for the patient and is uh, not uh, jeopardizing the hyper extension moment and then we go in extension yeah okay and I do have here a special instrument where you can now thank you very much calculate exactly the extension gap I go here medially and laterally in a relatively straight way to extension yeah that's now I think very good very good on the medial side whenever this instrument starts bowing in this area then you are relatively tough and in good extension yes and the same thing here and then we can see it's 17 17 millimeters we do have 10 millimeters on the tibial side and 7 millimeters for the size F2 1 okay and size 2 has 8 millimeters so we are on the tight side if this would be loose let me see 30 for example right then I have 10 millimeters on the tibia I have 8 on the femoral side which is 18 and then I have to uh, to reconstruct 12 millimeters and in this case I would go for 8 millimeters on the femur and for four millimeters on the tibia or if you have a tibial defect you can go eight millimeters on the tibia and four on the femur but this looks very nice so we are good I don't have to re-resect something or to reconstruct okay so this is now done thank you and now we can go again back to the tibia and do the preparation of the tibia so okay and now what we will do is that we just do a fixation more or less of the tibial plateau and then we push this in and here we go that's exactly how it should be so now we see that we have a nice coverage of the medial and of the lateral facet and we are relatively good in rotation this device gives you also a 12 degree inward and outward rotation so the orientation of the rotation is not so crucial I think the coverage of the bone is the important thing here and you see here the offset and this shows a medial offset of three millimeters yeah yeah it's a little bit more than two we have marks here which is to each direction is six millimeters so we do have three on the no on the lateral side okay 
So the next step is that we do a fixation of the tibia plateau. We do again an optimization like this and then we use this particular pin to fix it. It's very nice, you see it's nicely covered here. And the pin number two, we check again the offset. Here we go. And the offset is again at three millimeters to the lateral side. And now we do the preparation of the tibial part. And this is like that. And then we have a clamp to hold it in place. And then we do the reaming. This is a special instrument and it goes here. And then you have here the instrument for reaming the implant uh, uh, excavation for the tibia. Here we go. Then we turn it around. Thank you, Brigitte. Here we go. And this is now the preparation. Wonderful. So, and then you just see here that we do have the stem in the offset, which is four, three, medial. Okay, let's see if this goes in there. And then you have also the flanges for preparation. And this should be done quite gently. So whenever you go into contact, I go in and out because I had it one time that it was fixed very hardly and was not easy to get out again. And you see you have a very nice press fit, especially in the metaphysial part. Okay, and that's it actually. So tibia preparation is done. We can remove also the pins from the tibia. So we did the resection here with already a little bit more resection. So we push it a little bit to my side and then let's do, thank you, a four millimeter additional cut on the medial side. And the chisel please, which is over here. So, let's see if we can do it from that side. Yeah, so we have now a nice defect here. And just only to show you what we can do with this system if we have the defect on one side, it did it on the medial side so that the camera can see it even better. All right, I do the removal of all the pins. Thank you. And the very last one. So, and we said that we are going for a size two. So uh, now we do the exposure of the femur. We have the defect here on the medial side, four millimeters, and we have the cut on the lateral side. I go again for the reaming so that we have the nice glide fit. It's 18 and you can see the marks here. This one is for 177, which is the length of the femoral stem. So I go in there and I just want to have it pushed all the way down so that the mark disappears at the, at the higher cut, which you can see here. Wait, let me see. I can show you with this knife too. So, and the mark disappeared, so this should be sufficient. Very nice press fitted. And then we go for the four in one block and we do have now the four millimeters of hyper resection or compensation of the wedge on the medial side. And then we have two devices, 
a neutral device and a two millimeters offset device. And the important thing is, here is the two millimeter offset device. When you ha have a revision and the anterior bone is gone, then and I normally use a two millimeter offset to bring the resection guide more dorsally. If you have a primary, then we can go for a neutral one and see how the resection will be. And this is just always checked with the angel wing. We have to look for our rotation. I have two landmarks that I'm using. The one is the epicondyl axis, which I can feel here. And the second thing is that I see if I can go relative parallel to the, thank you, to the tibial cut. You see, these are the two landmarks. I put it in again. Okay, and I just check it with the angel wing, which is here. And I see if I have a good and nice resection. And this is pretty nice. So I think that the neutral position will be perfect in this side. A slight outward rotation. That seems very good. To me, again, rotation, trans-epicondyle axis, and parallel to the tibial cut. And then you do a fixation of this and the lateral pin. Check the rotation again, that looks nice to me. If you're in doubt, a little bit more external rotation is always helpful for a good patella tracking. I check again before I do the cut. If I do have to make the correction. No, it looks good to me. And then we can do the ventral and the dorsal cuts. And I probably will create also a defect on the medial side so that we have an L-shaped wedge for distal and dorsal reconstruction. So we probably could have used also, nah, it's not so bad, it's not so bad. And yes, Pekiti reminded me on the fixation on the side, that's very true, because then I have to remove these two pins for the oblique cuts here on the medial side and on the lateral side. Thank you. Yeah, these are the uh, uh, pins with a head, with a stop. It's now very close, wonderful. I can actually remove them, these guys. I leave the, the, the central pin in for the dorsal cut to get a little bit more stability. Okay. Yes. And now we go for the dorsal cuts, and I think the size 2 was good because in the AP diameter the femur is at least the size 2. So we go here, and I just create a defect here so that you can see the wedge also. I go for 4 millimeters, right, in the vision case. Okay, and then I have to remove the central reamer. Thank you. If you have bigger diameters and the offset, you have to take off the cutting guide, remove the pin and put the cutting guide on again. But for a size 13 and the central or neutral offset, you don't need to remove it before you pin it. And then we just do the final cuts, the oblique cuts and the FEMA preparations should be done by then. So, number one. Okay, thank you. And this one too. Okay. And then we do the removal of the pins. Thank you. So, thank you. So we have here the defect on the dorsal side and we have the regular cut on the lateral side. So the next step will be 
that we bring in the reamer again. Wonderful. Good fixation. And then we have, thank you very much, this instrument where you can see the degrees of angulation, right side 7 degrees or left side 5. And this is exactly what we want to have, the right side 7. This is the femur size 2. And this is the block for the preparation of the box. Now I have the word. So we have to bring this in. And normally it slides very nicely. And do we have the wedges on the medial mm -hmm. side? Yes? yes. Have you seen that? We have yes. to show this with my camera. Aha, uh -huh. you see, here's the wedge. And now I will just push it in a little bit. Yes, thank you very much. And you have to push it in here on that side. And it should have a nice bony contact. We are happy with that. And we are happy with this side. Nice coverage. So then we can fix the femur with two, again, headed pins. And then remove the central reamer and do the box preparation. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. So, for reaming, be cautious not to put your finger in there. This can cause some damage to your finger. Like this. That's the soft tissue from the collateral ligaments. Then you go for the central one. Yes, thank you very much. We fix it again and ream it. Okay, and then we go for the first reaming guide again, which is put upside down. First cut was f like this, and the last one is like this. And then we see if we are free and not reaming into our tibia. Okay. Okay, that's good. And now we have the U-shaped uh, device, I will show you in a second, I'll just clean this off with the bone. You see this is the reaming we created and we want to have it very nice and flat. This is the U-shaped guide and then we push this special U-shaped chisel in, thank you. Okay, push it a little bit towards me. Yeah, now I see. Thank you very much. And then, and this is quite important, we have to remove this medial part of the box because we bring in the implant in an oblique way and not to impinge on the medial wall, we have to take this off. would be easier if I hold it in the right position. Here we go. You have an automatic stop here, so you cannot go further than it is supposed to be. Wonderful, okay. And now we remove this guiding frame. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's okay. Remove this frame. And then we insert this central device. The important thing is that it has to be quite loose so that it can self-adjust in the position that it's supposed to be. You see here, this is the femoral offset. Dorsally, ventrally, it can move. And then we push this in, right? Okay, and then we hammer it in. 
One crucial and important point is, you see here that there is a little bit of a material super here and sometimes when you push it in it is blocked if it is so then you can push in with this rasp and bring it a little down and then you can hammer it we do it together yes so that should go in there yes yeah I think it will go nicely yeah but only in case yeah, in this case, the preparation was done very properly. Sometimes it blocks a little here, and then you just go in there with a little rasp, give it a little hammer, and then it slides in nicely. So now we remove the pins, and then we do our pulley. I remove both pins. Okay. Okay, so now we hammered in the femur. Looks very nice on my side. Looks quite nice on the medial side. Then we do the fixation of the femoral stem. And like this to create the proper offset. Okay, and now we push this up and we bring in we bring in the tibial plateau, wonderful, this goes quite easily, yeah, and then we push it up and stretch it out, yes, here we go, and now we do the fixation, this is the axis, which is fixed by this wheel, so that it cannot move, we bring this in, Push it a little down. I think we did need a little bit more flexion. Okay, a little bit more flexion. Yes. And now we bring this in. That's it. And we open the wheel and it's done. What I do now is, yeah, the retractors, we remove it. What I do now is if I see if I have a nice extension and not an overstretching, and this is quite good. There is no real impingement. And I push it here, and if this would move, then I would go for a higher tibial plateau in order not to overextend the knee. But it looks very nice. And now we go for flexion. We look for the patella tracking. It's, it runs very smoothly. So, preparation is done. And now we go for implantation of the enduro knee. All right. We are now at the implant assembling. We start first in uh, fixating uh, the security not as you can see here only that it does not fall off the table and after that we start with the tibia we don't have any augments on the tibia so we start with the assembling of the axis we pull in the axis and the cfr peak over the axis and then there comes the security ring which is now mounted on the tibia and then we do have a special instrument for fixating the tibia first of all we can take the tower on the axial part and over that we do the assembling of the tibia which is clamped and fixed like this because now we have to fix the screw in there you can see the axis and this instrument with the holes with these knobs go into the holes of the assembling ring and now I hold this and by pushing you feel that it is in there by pushing it down we go for 27 27 Newton meters you can see it here Yes, here we go. So that's fixed. And this is very, very tight. It has a triple security system in there so that the axis is fixed. And what is important, I can show you this, is 
this axis has a distance of three millimeters when you go to high flexion then it can go up a little bit the femur but it has also a dislocation stop so that the femur and the tibial part cannot luxate from each other the next thing is that we now do uh, the fixation of the stem we have a cementless stem um, in our uh, uh, specimen we had a long 13 millimeter stem this one is uh, a little shorter stem but one it second. shouldn't more yeah shouldn't be a problem by that and you, you can see whether we go for the offset of three millimeters to the lateral side mm -hmm. and uh, after the first fixation we hold it in one hand and then do again 20 newton meters of fixation okay here we go so the tibia is all done okay all right okay number one and now we go to the femur uh, we start with the wedge we have medially a four and four millimeter wedge we go with the screw and we fix it so that the cement pocket is facing the bone interface very well and then we go for the stem wonderful and do the fixation of this a junction part okay yeah yeah and now we see here that you can adjust the offset we said one millimeters to the dorsal which is nicely done by this all right and now we do a fixation of this stem i hold it we go with this fixation instrument and fix it on one of these okay fins all right i hold it again and then we go for 20 newton meters again 27 sorry 27 i always go with 27 i'm to be on the safe side okay yes wonderful all right okay and this is now the plastic part to avoid cement protrusion we cut off here a little bit of the offset and then we can push this in and this will then close the posterior box so that cement cannot go then in front of the implant and actually now the femur is done right so we go for implantation okay and as i said cementless stems and cement fixation all over the epiphyseal and metaphyseal part good okay so now we go for the implantation right we push it in a little bit like this and then we have here an impactor and it goes down very smoothly we remove the cement here we go and then we go for the polyethylene it goes in here and you see there's the rotation and then we go to the femur yes we put out the retractors and we go for the implant you see cement is all covered on the epimetaphysial part and we go here in flexion we hold it like this yeah still there is some cement to be removed and on this side too and what i'm doing now is that i assemble the tibial and the femoral part and then i go into extension ext 
extension of the knee joint. Okay, so that, yes, and now with pressure on the leg, we can wait for this 10 minutes until the cement has hardened. So after assembling of the femoral to the tibial axis, the next step is to do the fixation. That's a conical fixation where the axis of the tibia has to be mounted onto the femoral part and then fixed. Um, actually, you can do it two ways. The one thing is that you just put this inner part, do it, and then you slide it inward and do the fixation. I personally do it like this, that I have to look from above and see if the tibial axis is centered very nicely, like it is right now. And then you come from above and then you screw it on. So, and then after some turns, when you feel it, then you push it up and do a fixation. And then you can go with this instrument because now it's centered and you put the inner part through it. Then you see where it starts and you push it over it. Yes, that's nice. And now we push in this special part. Okay, you turn and you pull it up like this and then it will be fixed. So turning on, the, on this lower part and pulling it up and then it is fixed as you can see. And then you do a fixation of this mechanism by 20 Newton meters. Like this, and then the cone is fixed, and then you open it again, like this, and then you can remove the entire instrument, like this, and like this, okay? And then you see the central axis fixed. And then you have to uh, put on the final fixation screw. And as there is a torque on the femur, you have this instrument, this instrument, which can give you good grip in the hold so that the torque is not transmitted to the femoral part. So where is now the knot? It's here. You bring this down. Okay, very easy, okay, now this is closed, okay, okay, and then you put this on and do the fixation of the screw, okay, all done, all done. Okay, so, and this it is. All right, so this was actually the implantation of the Enduro system. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your attention. And whenever there is any uh, question I could probably answer, especially from a clinical point of view, I would be happy to help you out. Thank you very much.